video will be looking at sustainability. We'll first of all look at uh, what is sustainability and what is the aim of that, and then we'll look at two examples of sustainable development, uh, which is timber production and fishing. So first of all, we'll look at the aims. So first of all, is uh, sustainability is about ensuring that there are enough resources for future generations to use. Um, the human population is increasing massively, or we say exponentially, uh, and that means there are more people in the world that we need to uh, provide resources for and to sustain, and therefore we, we are also using up the resources very, very quickly. And a lot of the resources that we have been using are finite resources, meaning that once they've been used up, then we can't replace them easily within our lifetime. So one major one would be the fossil fuels. And so the problem is that that's why we need to try to find ways to make sure we have enough resources uh, to maintain our future generations to survive well as well. So that is what we mean by sustainable resources or renewable resources. So things like it could be renewable energy source or it could be renewable resources that or sustainable resources that we can develop within our lifetime right now. Another reason for sustainability is to enable less economically developed countries to develop well. These countries can harvest some of their own unique or special resources that people can use to uh, to replace or replenish the things that we are using up already. So actually this provides an economic uh, opportunity for these countries to, uh, to use and to develop uh, their own ec economy to make sure they can thrive well. Third reason is to balance the consumption of resources be, uh, between the more economically developed countries and the less economically developed countries. So um, a lot of times that the more developed, uh, the more economically developed countries tend to use up a lot of these resources uh, much quicker than the less economically developed countries. So therefore, it's all about balancing the resources to make sure all people, regardless of their wealth or their status, they can also get enough resources to use and to survive. And the fourth reason is about preserving the environment and making sure that we are protecting the biodiversity uh, and to ensure all other living beings can also survive well. So that is the aim of sustainability. So we'll now look at the two examples uh, that we'll, we'll think about would be timber production and fishing. So when it comes to timber production, we can largely split into two major groups. We can have small scale timber production and large scale uh, timber production. We'll look at small scale first. Number one is coppicing and the other one is pollarding. So we'll look at coppicing first. Coppicing is a very popular method in terms of timber production because it's easy to do and it's, it's relatively quick. So the idea about uh, coppicing and pollarding can be summarized here. So imagine we've got the, uh, a forest and we've got trees like that. Uh, I can't draw the whole forest, but imagine one of them like this. We can have uh, this part is what we call pollarding. And pollarding is about cutting the tree trunk at a higher space here. And the idea is once the tree has been cut, they can actually start growing more shoots from, th from the area that has been cut. And then pollarding is about cutting it at a higher place so that any newly grown shoots or branches can't be easily eaten by herbivores, so they're more protected. Then coppicing is this particular uh, method shown on the left. So coppicing is, same, is similar to pollarding, but except the fact that it's been cut near to the base of the tree, near the bottom here. And the idea is about the same thing as about having more branches coming out from the cut. Uh, there so that we can harvest more wood coming out because they grow relatively quickly. The difference between coppicing and pollarding is simply about how high the tree has been cut. Um, coppicing is quite quick and also it generates more branches but it can be easily eaten by, um, by herbivores going around whereas pollarding is less easily eaten. However, there, you won't be necessarily be able to grow as many branches as coppicing. So coppicing is about growing more branches uh, whereas pollarding is the same, but it just cuts higher up to uh, avoid herbivores. We can have rotational coppicing, which is even better. And the idea is about how, imagine that you have a whole forest and you cut them up into different sections, so let's say four sections. And then the idea is about you finish coppicing one, the trees in one area, and then you, and then you move on to the next one. Uh, and that is about allowing time for the already coppiced trees to grow to an accept, acceptable standard, so that you have enough branches before you chop those branches again for the next uh, round of coppicing. So it's about rotational to make sure that you protect the trees and protect your source of timber. 
Coppicing is quite a popular choice when it comes to exam questions on sustainability, so I would suggest that you look into coppicing a bit more. But that is pretty much it, that's the general idea about coppicing. Chopping the trees down near its base to grow more branches. Another good thing to talk about coppicing in terms of this is that because you're cutting the trees near to the base of it, so therefore no trees that are going to grow again or anything else would block the sunlight. So near the base of the trees in the soil, remember there are still loads of other organisms uh, surviving in that particular area. Because there's no trees blocking the sunlight, there will be no competition and no secession happening. Therefore you're maintaining the biodiversity in that particular area. So that is another benefit of coppicing. On the other hand, we can have the large scale timber production. And this is referring to the felling of large areas of forest. So almost like deforestation. So you pretty much cut down the entire tree. But the problem with this is that the trees will not regrow because you're, you're destroying large areas of the forest. So this could be by cutting the trees down or doing a controlled burning of trees. So because you're destroying them so much, they won't regrow. So in some sense, the large scale timber production is not sustainable and could potentially cause loads of other problems. Uh, for example, soil erosion because of a lack of tree roots to uh, protect the soil and protect the soil nutrients in there. So if we have to do that because of, of a massive need for those uh, timber, then humans need to do something about it to protect and, and, and make sure that we don't lose all of these trees. And these are some of the methods. Number one is selective cutting. You don't cut all of the trees, right? You don't, especially not the uh, more protected ones or the endangered ones. So you, you don't, you just select specific trees to cut down. Uh, if you do do that, you also have to replant trees and you have to do so at between, uh, to make sure there's enough distances between each of these trees to avoid competition. Because otherwise, if there is competition, you're decreasing the chances of both of these trees to survive and grow well. So you need to make sure you replant trees, but at optimal distances between them. You also need to manage pests and pathogens to, again, is to make sure they don't get, the trees don't get sick uh, and they don't get eaten that easily to make sure they can grow well. And also we have to think about the local people who live in those forests, so the indigenous people. So you make sure that you are protecting specific areas for them and make sure they have a place to live or to use um, so that you're not taking away their home. Uh, when you're doing uh, large-scale timber production or fe fe felling of trees. And that is all of timber production. So now we'll have a look at sustainable fishing. It's a very well-practiced method now uh, because uh, there was a time where there was excessive fishing and that, meaning that people were starting to notice that there are less fish and less species or a less variety of the species um, in, the, in, in the sea and the ocean. So they need to make sure we have enough fish for the future generation as well. So these are the four main methods that they use. Number one is, to f is introducing a fishing quota. So this is to avoid overfishing, especially for those fishermen. Let's say if they're using a massive net, they would measure the mass of the uh, fish that they've caught. And if they have exceeded the quota, they have to release some of the fish back to the sea. Another method is to use a bigger net mesh. If, they use a, if they're using a net to do fishing and you use a very, very a small mesh. That means even the younger fish that have just been born or just been about for a short while, uh, they can still be caught and meaning less of these fish can actually survive to adulthood and to reproduce to make more fish for the future. So therefore we use uh, a net with bigger holes and bigger mesh to allow these smaller ones to escape uh, to survive in the ocean so that we can have more fish in the future. Uh, we can also restrict the uh, time of the year where you can do fishing, no matter if it's recreational fishing or actually that is your livelihood. So it's about protecting the breeding season because there are a particular time of the year where the fish will be, uh, will be reproducing massively. So we want to make sure again it's about allowing those young fish to uh, survive well and to reproduce for future. Another really uh, well-practiced method nowadays would be fish farming. Uh, and fish farming have two benefits to it. Number one is to maintain our protein supply. You can take the larger fish, the older fish, and then sell them 
and then keeping the younger fish behind to reproduce and then once they grow up you sell them again and then you keep the, the offspring and then uh, keep farming them basically and so you are maintaining that constant supply of protein and meat rather than relying on fishermen to go outside and then seeing if they're lucky enough to catch the fish and the other thing is about preventing the loss of wild species because there will be certain species that we want to protect uh, that is naturally existing in the ocean so by doing fish farming uh, you're limiting the chances of fish farmers to actually catch these wild and endangered or rare species of fish and then selling them for as meat so you're preventing the loss of the, the wild species as well and these are different methods of sustainable fishing so here's a very quick summary about the whole chapter of sustainability. There are several aims and importance of sustainability and the idea is about ensuring that there's enough resources for future use, uh, protecting the environment, again for maintaining the biodiversity, uh, so which has a scientific importance to it, and economically uh, and ethically it's about allowing those countries that are less economically developed to be able to thrive to have a chance to thrive and to balance the consumption between these countries and other countries that are very very much more well developed and we have two specific examples we've got timber production and also fishing in terms of timber production we can have small and large scale small scale timber production is more sustainable uh, through coppicing and pollarding the difference between the two is simply that coppicing is cutting near the base of the tree whereas pollarding is cutting higher up to avoid uh, herbivores eating these newly formed branches and the another benefit of uh, rotational coppicing is about allowing the trees to regrow naturally by themselves and also that you're maintaining the biodiversity by not allowing any uh, secession to occur on the other hand, we've got the large scale timber production, which is the felling of large areas of forest, almost like deforestation by cutting or a controlled burning. Um, the thing is, the trees in this case will not regrow, and therefore we have to make sure we uh, do different things to ensure we can protect these forests and protect these trees to ensure we, have, uh, we can have a future source um, of timber. Last thing is sustainable fishing, which we can use the four different methods to make sure we have enough for the future, which is fishing quotas, uh, using a bigger net mesh to allow smaller fish to escape, uh, restricting the time of the year where you can do fishing to protect the breeding seasons, and also introducing fish farming, which while maintaining the protein supply, maintaining these people's livelihoods and our food uh, supply, but also preventing the loss of wild species and that is sustainability.